Hi there, I'm just going to do a little bit of an introduction to the problems of feeding difficulties in newborn babies and some of the areas that are important to look at and evaluate. So let's talk about feeding in relationship to breastfeeding. Bottle feeding is slightly different, it's not quite so involved but it's important as well. There's some important prerequisites that are needed for a baby to feed, to latch, and to have a normal feeding function. And I want to just talk about a few of these factors and the potential problems that they can have and how to address them and to deal with them. So in order to breastfeed, actually, efficiently and correctly, the baby has to open their mouth wide enough in order to take in quite a lot of the breast, all of the areola and the tissues around it. So actually, the, um, the nipple is against the hard palate and actually the suckling of the tongue is around, actually, is, is actually guiding some of the ducts to release the milk further, further back. So you're taking in a, a big part of the breast, not just the nipple. If, if a, the baby can only suck on the nipple, it causes soreness and the latch is incorrect, the feeding is going to be a problem. This is a very important thing. So you need, as a prerequisite, for a baby to get this normal latch a lot of different things. A lot of different things have to come into play and to function correctly. Um, the first thing that we need is the jaw to be functioning. So the babies often, because of a variety of reasons, a lot of them are to do with actually the pre-birth positioning of a baby. They're kind of squashed. The mandible, which is the, 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 the jawbone, is locked backwards and jammed up. And that's a very common condition in babies and needs to be released in order to for a normal breastfeeding or even a normal feeding problem you know uh, to be maintained it's it's mandibles are very small in babies compared to adults that they're, they're tiny if you have a look and they have to be open fully and also the muscles need to be functioned correctly um, and these often need to be retrained and the function has to become very important and the temporal bone which is the bone that sits the the ear sits in is often locked in in babies from pre-birth molding or the birth itself causing difficulties locking up these bones but the the mandible hangs from the temporal bone so if you've got dysfunction in the temporal area it's going to lock up the jaw function. So the first thing, one of the first things, is to look at the function of the mandible and the temporomandibular joint. Now, what we also need is tongue function. So a baby's tongue has to move because it presses on these ducts to allow the milk to be released in a normal breastfeeding situation. So the tongue has to be actually to, to lie quite flat and cupping, and it has to have some kind of backwards and forwards movement, not a grasping, but it also has to lie down over the lower gums. Now, if you've got a tongue that isn't functioning normally, it cannot be moved down over the lower gums, again, you're not going to create enough space for the baby to feed correctly. Now this is the world of tongue tie, which is incredibly common these days, increasingly common. And there's, I know there's a lot of press articles about tongue tie that's happened at the moment, and we work very closely with a tongue tie uh, release pediatrician uh, who we send a lot of patients to, and he sends a lot of patients to us. And it's very, very important. There are four classes of tongue tie. 
let's classify one to four. One tongue tie classify classification one and two are at front, so it's actually the tie the tongue is tied right underneath it to the to the actual front. A little bit further back in number two, three and four are posterior tongue ties, which are right at the back of the tongue. And these are often missed by uh, midwives, pediatricians, and health visitors um, because I don't think they, they, they're trained in doing this. They still, a posterior tongue tie still has an effect on causing tongue dysfunction and it's very important that they're checked out. So these things need checked out. We can check them at the practice or we can send people onto the pediatrician to check them correctly to make sure that 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 function is is there. Not all need to be treated. It depends on a lot of the other factors that we're going to talk about. So you need a tongue that is free and allowed to be moved. Now, there are other there are other part there are other causes of tongue dysfunction, and one of them is the actual nerve supply to the tongue, the hypoglossal nerve, which is a cranial nerve that passes between the head and the neck through a little canal called the hypoglossal canal which is often locked up because of the plates of the head are locked in into each other which is due to birth abnormal or pre-birth positions of the head so this area at the back of the head can get locked up and affect the function of this hypoglossal nerve which directly affects the muscle control of the tongue. Actually, there is another there is another nerve which is very important actually in terms of tongue function which is called the platoglossus which is has its nerve supply with the vagus nerve. Now the vagus nerve is very important with a lot of these areas we're going to talk about in terms of feeding difficulties in babies. And again, the vagus nerve, there's a little canal called the jugular foramen, which is between, again, between the head and the neck at the back behind the ears. And it's an area which is particularly vulnerable to compressive distress, even in a normal in a normal delivery. There's a lot of rotation that happens around between the head and the neck and a lot of ability for the nerves to be compressed or some of the surrounding tissue around the nerves to be compressed and this can cause a variety of dysfunctions um, on some particular nerves the hypoglossal which I've talked about the vagus nerve the vagus nerve has a huge amount of, of potential problems it for example there is yes as I've said the platoglossus elevates the tongue so it's vital in terms of the, it elevates the back of the tongue actually which is vital in a normal swallowing response but also the, the vagus nerve supplies another little muscle which is very important the levator veli palatini which elevates the soft palate which blocks off the nasal passages so and through the trachea which means a baby can breastfeed and breathe still continue and it's very very important if this muscle isn't working there's a problems and the baby can't breastfeed can't swallow um there's a lot of other muscles actually laryngeal muscles that are supplied by this vagus nerve so it's a it's a, a key a key area where there's potential for trouble um Another nerve that passes through this jugular foramen is the glossopharyngeal nerve, which actually has a nerve supply of, to the posterior third of the tongue, which is very important. It also supplies a couple of vital other uh, muscles which elevate the pharynx and the larynx, which are really important to allow um, swallowing as well. So you've got this big area of potential problems that can be affected by birth or pre-birth positions or in, in a baby and need to be addressed. Um, one more nerve I just want to talk about which is the accessory nerve which is very important to supply the, the sternocleidomastoid muscle which is really key in head and neck control and rotation of the head and neck um, which is very important in feeding and feeding positioning. 
Um, that's why it's one of the reasons why there's many babies who can feed one side and not the other side. That can be to do with palate dysfunction. It can be due to nerve supply problems, or it can do to be to do with the mechanics of the upper neck itself, which goes through quite a lot of strain in in the birth. So you've got the function of the soft palate, which we've talked about with regards to the muscle. You've got the hard palate, the actual bones themselves that can be locked down, which is actually an effect often of the birth process as well. The bones are all interconnected and compression through some of the higher bones can lock up the, the back of the hard palate, which is an area that it's always very important for us to check as well. So you've got neck function, you've got the very important area between the head and the neck which some of these nerves actually pass through as well um, you've got all these nerves and there are others for example the facial nerve which supplies the anterior to two thirds of the tongue and some parts of the oral cavity so that's very important and that can be that can have some dysfunction around where it passes around the the the, the mandible the joint which is actually very can be often locked as well so you've got these all these potential areas um, which need to be checked if there's a if there's latch or feeding difficulties which are incredibly common i just wanted to talk about the causes of tongue tie um there there is some research now people don't really know why but there's some research um which talks about the uh, a potential genetic cause or or a it's, a, it's to often to do with a, a very subtle lack of develop in midline structures. So actually, the tongue releases very early on embryologically um, when it's attached through to the mouth, and then it actually goes through this process of releasing. And some sort of gene coding is affected by... The, they could, there, is, there is some evidence that where they talk about um, that a certain percentage of mothers cannot uptake folic acid even if they take it orally it doesn't get taken into the body and if there is a lack of folic acid in the body it can lead to these to some of these very subtle midline problems which seems to relate to a weakness in the um, gastroesophageal um, valve sphincter um, which can cause a reflux reflux itself is a very important cause of feeding difficulties in babies. If you've got a baby who has a weak gastroesophageal sphincter, what happens is they start feeding and the tummy gets slightly full, but if actually the food comes straight back up into the esophagus because it's not being held down in the stomach, they will stop feeding. These are the classic babies who will feed for 10 minutes, no, sorry, for, for, for five minutes, and then they will stop and then they'll be irritable and they will cry and you won't get any more food down them. This is often to do with reflux and there's a variety of nerve supplies. I'll talk about reflux another time and how we need to evaluate that and talk about its dysfunction. Colic can cause problems as well, which is a slightly different disorder, but it can still cause dysfunctions and a difficulty in feeding. Babies need a certain degree of primitive what we would call primitive reflex reflexes in order to feed properly to suckle free a rooting reflex which is when you just tickle the side their their lip they will move towards you that's a that's a very important reflex which is pre-conscious under conscious reflex um, suckling so if you touch the palate they will suck the swallow reflex there are other reflexes that are can be too stimulated for example the gag reflex which can be to do with an, a hyper irritation of the vagus nerve again um, and often babies with feeding difficulties have a, a too aggressive gag reflex and if you touch the top of their hard palate they will gag and they shouldn't you should only gag if you touch the soft palate that's kind of important a cough reflex can be overly accentuated but again babies can cough when they have reflux as well so we have to babies can't talk to us and we have to work out what's going on and that's why it's very important to look at all of these different factors and others to find out what is our difficulty here 
and this is a little bit more of the detail as to why we we should check these babies out and why it's important to use a, a good lactation consultant and we can send you to, to good lactation consultants who can actually advise a certain positions which are correct for a baby to feed in properly and certain ways of latching which are very important otherwise it becomes impossible to feed anyway tongue tie needs to be sorted out um, Again, we can refer, we refer to a doctor called Dr. Justin Roach, who is a paediatrician who does laser, which is a very good way of, of releasing tongue tie, and we can refer you on to that person as well. And it's very important, I think, to check these babies who have feeding difficulties, just to see if any of, if any of these factors are part of it and what factors are, and to discern actually what's going on. Okay, I wish you well. <laughs>